Fighting Blindness Canada's Clinician Scientist Emerging Leader Awards were launched in 2017 to build the pipeline of ophthalmologists and optometrists who also do research. Clinician scientists help translate laboratory research into the clinic and help bring clinical trials to Canadian patients. Six years on, past winners have undertaken prestigious training fellowships and launched their own independent research careers. Earlier this year, we were pleased to announce three new recipients, and today they will share information about their exciting projects. My name is Marko Popovich. Uh, I'm an ophthalmology resident physician in the Department of Ophthalmology and Vision Sciences at the University of Toronto. My name is Mélanie Hébert, and I'm currently an ophthalmology resident at Université Laval in Quebec City. My name is uh, Kirill Zaslavsky. I completed my MD and PhD degrees through the Physician Scientist Program at the University of Toronto, and I'm currently a fourth-year ophthalmology resident at the University of Toronto. The Clinician Scientist Emerging Leader Award will provide funding to clinician scientists who have demonstrated an interest in developing a research career to complement their clinical practice. Applications go through a peer review, and the most promising projects are accepted. This year, two of the projects focus on retinal detachment, and the third project investigates a condition called birdshot uveitis. The project has to do with a sight-threatening ocular condition called retinal detachment. And what retinal detachment really is, is a separation of the light-sensitive layer at the back of the eye, the retina, from its underlying support structures. Retinal detachment is repaired surgically and can either be done in the operating room in the form of a procedure called a vitrectomy or in the clinic with a simple uh, procedure called a pneumatic retinopexy. And although vitrectomy is most often done for retinal detachments, the team here in Toronto has really pioneered the use of pneumatic retinopexy as a feasible alt alternative. We've done research that's shown that visual outcomes in selected patients can be better with pneumatic retinopexy relative to vitrectomy. And so what this project is doing is aiming to evaluate these two procedures at the population level. So for all patients in Ontario over the last 10 years who've received either of these procedures, we'll be evaluating how well they did, uh, what was the reattachment rate of the retina after the procedure in the long run, what were the surgical complications? And also, what was the cost associated with these procedures? And through this novel analysis, we'll be able to uh, provide important insights that will guide our surgical uh, decision-making in this sight-threatening ocular condition. Our funded project aims to determine what is the better surgical technique to repair retinal detachments. The retina is the screen at the back of the eye, which allows us to see. So when the retina detaches, it causes severe and irreversible vision loss if we do not reattach it. This will be a randomized controlled trial, which will study the two most commonly used procedures worldwide, vitrectomy with or without scleral buckle. Vitrectomy involves removing the vitreous, which, which is a gel that fills the eye and allows us to then use laser and gas to solidify the, re the and reattach uh, the retina. We can add a scleral buckle, which is like a belt that is placed around the eye with the hopes that it will reduce the risk of requiring a second surgery. This can, however, be associated to other possible complications. So whether or not using the scleral buckle is beneficial to most patients is exactly the research question we are trying to address here. The goal of my project is to understand the mechanism underlying birdshot chorioretinitis. Birdshot is a unique genetic autoimmune blinding disease. Every person with birdshot carries a gene called HLA-A29. That alters what the body's immune cells see, and these immune cells over time attack the tissues of the eye and cause vision loss. It can be quite difficult to control. Patients often try multiple medications. Over time, they lose vision and also suffer side effects from those medications. In over 40 years of us knowing about birdshot, all we really know is that, yes, in people's, uh, uh, their, the immune cells do respond to eye proteins, and it's likely some sort of T cell, but that's about all we know. So my project is aimed at using single cell RNA sequencing, relatively new technology that is, allows us to look at individual immune cells in a person's blood. And they can tell us what this immune cell is by looking at the, all the genes that, it, that are turned on in it, but also by reading the individual sequence of 
uh, the immune receptors on these cells, we can find out what they target. And so then by comparing a whole population of immune cells between people that have active birdshot with the populations of immune cells um, of people in, with treated birdshot and who, who are in remission, we hope to find cells that are then important for disease progression and disease activity. Hopefully, this can help us uh, design better treatments. The funding from this award can help the translation of fundamental and preclinical research into clinical trials, new treatments, and improved patient outcomes. It also allows young ophthalmologists and optometrists to gain crucial research experience and launch independent research careers. I sincerely thank Fighting Blindness Canada for their support of our project. Uh, our project could not happen without their um, financial support in order to access the databases, to uh, involve uh, statisticians to conduct the, the complex statistical analysis that we need in order to uh, conduct this project. Um, you know, we need funding and, and what Fighting Blindness Canada has done for us has been truly remarkable and I want to sincerely thank them for all their support. The funding will allow us to jumpstart this trial, being able to recruit and follow up more than 500 patients with multiple types of ocular imaging over a year to see how they will heal after their surgery requires the time and energy of a lot of people and a strong research team. I'm very thankful for FBC for funding this project. Now, it's actually quite essential for people who are interested in bridging the worlds of medicine and research to find themselves in a long protracted period of clinical training have, can become, can find themselves further and further divorced from the research world. And this is the so-called valley of death where many people kind of veer off the path of research. So FBC is essential in helping me to reintegrate with the research world, but it's also allowing me to learn new methods and to keep myself current. Congratulations to this year's awardees. It isn't an exaggeration to say that this program is as essential as ever. Our candidates this year were exceptional, and this holds great promise for the future strength of clinical research. At the core of it all, vision is one of the most critical senses that allows us to interact with the world. So preventing blindness and restoring sight is really one of the most incredible and uh, rewarding uh, opportunities that we as ophthalmologists uh, get. We're at a very exciting point uh, when it comes to vision research. The way that um, ophthalmology was practiced 10 or 20 years ago is completely different than how it's being practiced today. And I'm sure it's going to be different in 10, 20 or 30 years. Um, ophthalmology is a field of innovation and being involved in that innovation to, to push our existing knowledge of, uh, of ophthalmic diagnosis and treatment uh, in order to care for our patients in a better way, I think is tremendously exciting. And I'm truly um, humbled to be involved in vision research at this time. To learn more about the research we fund, please visit us online at fightingblindness.ca.